All right, let's have a look at the phases of matter. Phases are basically how far apart molecules are from each other. Molecules have attractive forces between them, and these attractive forces will attract the molecules together, hold them together in different phases. The phase itself depends on how far apart the molecules happen to be. If the molecules are the closest they're ever going to be, they form what's called a crystal lattice, which is a regular geometric shape pattern of atoms or molecules within the solid phase. This is called a crystal lattice. This is a crystal lattice of quartz. Isn't it pretty? And I got another one too. This is calcite, regular shaped geometric pattern. The internal structure is going to be expanded upon to the external structure. In other words, the shape of the crystal indicates the pattern that the atoms are in at the smallest possible scale. In the solid phase, molecules have the strongest attractive forces they're ever going to have. I know you can't see it, but the molecules inside the crystal are actually vibrating in place. That's right, they vibrate. The hotter it is, the faster they vibrate. And the colder it is, the slower they vibrate. They don't actually move relative to each other, though. They just vibrate in place. And solids have definite shape, and they take up a definite amount of space, definite volume. In a liquid, you've got less attractive forces, so the molecules aren't locked together in a crystal lattice. They're free to flow. They're free to flow. Flow. The molecules follow each other because they're still attracted to each other. Some liquids are really thick, like this goop here. Resistance to flow, or thickness of the liquid, is referred to as viscosity. As the temperature increases, the molecules move faster, and therefore the rate of flow will be faster. So if temperature goes up, resistance to flow goes down. Remember, viscosity is thickness. Think about syrup. Cold syrup is sluggish. Hot syrup is really, really runny, less viscous. Also, as attractive force strength increases, viscosity increases. The more strongly the molecules are attracted to each other, the harder it's going to be for them to flow past each other, because they're going to be like all bound together, like, oh, wow. It's kind of like, you know, meeting your friends in the hallway. The more attracted they are, the less you're willing to flow through the hallway. Something else that liquids do is that they evaporate. Now, this is different from boiling. In boiling, all the molecules have the ability to leave, to turn into a gas. In evaporation, only the surface molecules are able to escape. So a liquid can actually evaporate at any temperature, but it can only boil at its boiling point. So evaporation, surface molecules escaping into the gas phase at any temperature. Boiling, all the molecules have enough energy to escape. Liquids also, because they're attracted to each other, are going to have definite volume. But because they're able to flow, they take the shape of whatever container you put them in. Now, if you take water out into space and you like pour water out in space where there's no gravity, the attractive forces between the water molecules will pull the water into a glob. And you can actually drink that glob of water right out of the air. That's where the attractive forces will get you. Gas molecules essentially have no attractive forces between them. This allows them to move very freely and spread very far apart, which is why you can move through air. Air is a gas, and therefore you can easily brush the molecules aside because they're not as attracted to each other. Not like in a solid where if you try to move through a solid, you can't do it because it just isn't going to work. The molecules are too close together. In a gas, they're much further apart. No attractive forces. Because gas molecules are so far apart, gases are the only phase that can be affected by changes in pressure. If I push down on this, it's going to increase the pressure. Now eventually, it's going to cause me to be able to use this for its intended purpose. Gas can be compressed. The compressibility of gas makes it very suitable for an internal combustion engine. The gaseous products that are given off 
when gasoline burns, causes a piston to push down with the increase in pressure. And that provides the power stroke that allows your car's engine to provide power to the wheels. Gases behave in very predictable ways. I can see the future. Changes in temperature, pressure, and volume are easily calculated. We'll get to that in a later video. And the molecules will spread out to fill whatever container you put them in. So they don't have any definite shape, and they don't have any definite volume. They're just going to spread out to fill whatever space you put them in. Gas molecules will continue to move until they hit something. And when they hit it, they'll bounce off. Phases can also change from one to the other depending on whether you're adding heat or removing heat. If you add heat, that's endothermic. Phase changes like this include solid, adding heat to it, turns it into liquid. That's called melting. Taking a liquid and adding heat turns it into a gas. That's called boiling. These are both endothermic because they require the addition of heat. Solid plus heat turns into a gas. This one is fairly rare. It's called sublimation. Carbon dioxide, which is known as dry ice, dry ice because it turns directly from solid to gas without becoming a liquid, so it's not wet ice, it's dry ice. And iodine also does this. On the other hand, if you remove heat, that's exothermic. For example, if you take a gas and remove heat from it, it'll turn into a liquid. It's called condensing, and that's actually what happens when clouds form. If you take a liquid and remove the heat from it, you turn it into a solid. So what happens in your freezer? You put water in an ice cube tray, put the water in the freezer. The freezer is colder than the water. Heat flows from where it's hot to where it's not. So the heat will flow from the water into the freezer. Now as the water loses its heat, it's going to freeze and turn into a solid. Turning a gas into solid also requires removing heat. This is called deposition. Dry ice does this. You can take gaseous carbon dioxide, and when you cool it down enough and remove enough heat, you can turn it back into a solid. Deposition is what happens on cold winter mornings. Now, in the summer, when it gets cool at night, water vapor in the air condenses onto leaves and stuff like that. It makes dew. But in the winter time, when it's below freezing, the water vapor in the air, when it touches below freezing surfaces, will turn directly into a solid, and you got to take out your scraper in the morning.